Hello, this video is going to look at the total product of labor. The total product of labor shows the relationship between the quantity of a firm's output and number of workers employed, holding the quantity of capital input fixed. We can think of this as a short-run production function, where the quantity of output of the firm is a function of units of labor L. The average product of labor is output per worker. It's the average units of output produced per worker. We can calculate the average product of labor by taking the total product of labor, which is the firm's output, dividing it by the number of workers that produce that output. And here is a typical shape of a total product of labor curve. There's also a marginal product of labor. This is the change in output, or total product of labor, from hiring an additional worker. It is given by the change in total product of labor divided by the change in units of labor. The marginal product of labor is the slope of the total product of labor. And we can write it in slope form as the following. Or, given that the slope is nothing more than a derivative, if we're using calculus, we can write the marginal product of labor as the following. We're just taking the derivative of the short-run production function, taking the derivative of the total product of labor function with respect to L, units of labor. Now let's look at the shape of the total product of labor curve. We can think of it breaking down this shape in three sections. In section one here, output increases at an increasing rate from zero to 15 workers. So we're measuring units of labor on the horizontal or x-axis, and we're measuring the firm's total output on the y-axis. So between 0 and 15 workers, output goes up, but it goes up at an increasing rate exponentially here. We have increasing marginal returns to labor in this section. The marginal product of the last worker hired exceeds that of the previous worker hired. So in this range here, when we hire additional workers, output is going up in larger and larger increments. Why? Because of greater specialization of job task. This saves time for moving workers from one activity to another. So instead of a worker doing 10 different things, when we have uh, uh, enough workers, we can do some divisional labor, some specialization, where each worker may only specialize in doing one or two job tasks. Looking at, the uh, looking at the shape here of the total product of labor, in this uh, middle section here, output increases at a decreasing rate between 15 and 30 workers. The slope is decreasing, but still positive. So the slope here is flattening out, but it's still positive. So as we hire workers in this range, output is going up, but it's going up in smaller and smaller increments. In this section here, the marginal product of labor is getting smaller and smaller with each additional worker hired. Yet, the marginal product of labor, it's not negative, it's still positive. Uh, one thing to note here is that the firm will produce in this range, somewhere in this middle range here, to maximize profit. So in this range, we have diminishing marginal returns to labor. The added output from hiring an additional worker gets smaller and smaller. So between 15 and 30 workers, we have diminishing marginal returns to labor. Why? With capital fixed, the amount of capital per worker falls as more workers are hired. Workers may have to wait to use machines, making the added workers less productive. Uh, just a minor point here, FYI, uh, the inflection point here occurs at L equals 15. The second derivative, the second derivative of the total product change is signed from positive to negative. This is the location where the marginal product of labor curve is maximized, changing from upward sloping to downward sloping. Shape of the total product of labor. Let's look at the final section here. This is an extreme section here. Uh, this is where output decreases if the firm is hiring additional workers. And that's, an, and that's gonna occur here when the firm hires more than 30 workers. The slope is negative, so the marginal product of labor is actually negative. We hire the next worker in this range. Output doesn't go up, it doesn't stay the same, it actually falls. So we have negative marginal product of labor in this section here. Uh, why? The workplace is getting so congested with workers that it is very difficult to move and try to get work done.
few things to note about this uh, curve here. Output in this example is maximized at 30 workers. So at 30 workers, the maximum output here is 142 units of output. You'll notice that the marginal product of labor is zero here. When output is maximized, the marginal product of labor, or in other words, the slope of the total product of labor is zero. Remember that the marginal product of labor is the slope of the total product of labor function. So the slope here at the top of this hill is going to be zero. If you were to draw a tangent line here on the top of the hill, uh, it'd be horizontal, and the slope of a horizontal line is zero. Remember that the goal of the firm is not to maximize output, it is to maximize profit. So uh, the number of workers here, 30, is not the ideal number of workers for the firm to hire. So the firm will most likely hire fewer than 30 workers. Let's talk about the average product of labor some more. This is output per worker. To find the average product of labor, draw a ray from the origin to a point on the total product of labor curve. The slope of that ray equals the average product of labor. So this red line here, this uh, line from the origin here, this ray from the origin, if we were to connect it to a point on the total product of labor, like right here, and you were to calculate the slope of that red line, you would have the average product of labor. So the slope of the red line is 75 divided by 15, or 5, and that's the average product of labor at 15 workers. So with 15 workers, each worker produces on average 5 units. Note here that we can calculate the total product of labor by taking the average product of labor and multiplying it by the number of workers. So in our example here, if the average product of labor is 5, and we multiply that by 15, we have the total output of 75. Now let's think about the marginal product of labor. To find the marginal product of labor, draw a tangent line to a point on the total product of labor curve. The slope of that tangent line equals the marginal product of labor at the point of tangency. So you can see here, tangent point somewhere over here, the red line then the slope of it represents the marginal product of labor. So it looks like that the marginal product of labor is increasing here as the slope of the total product of labor curve increases. Then in this middle section here, the slope of total product of labor falls, so the marginal product of labor falls. Right, a, right here where output is maximized, marginal product of labor is zero, the slope of the total product of labor function is also zero. Okay, and finally, uh, here is a total product of labor function that would give rise to this nice looking uh, curve over here on the right. We could get, calculate the marginal product of labor by taking the derivative, so the derivative of L is 1, the derivative of 4L squared is 8L, and the derivative of this last term is minus 0.3L squared. To find where output is maximized, that is where total product of labor is maximized, we're going to set the slope here of the total product of labor function equal to 0. The slope of the total product of labor function is the marginal product of labor function. So we basically have a quadratic equation here. A is minus 0.3, B is 8, and C is 1. Here is our quadratic formula. So plugging those values into quadratic formula, we find that output is maximized when L equals 26.8, let's call it. So roughly 26.8, okay, somewhere over here, output is going to be maximized. Okay, I'll stop here.